Hello, I'm Richard Sandling and this week Swedish vampire film Let the Right One In. When I was told I was going to watch a Swedish vampire film, I thought it was going to be the best film ever. Not only do I properly love Scandinavian cinema, but Swedish vampires? Surely that's just going to be nothing but killing and nudity, that's fantastic! And there is lots of killing and flesh on display, it's just that unfortunately all the people doing the killing and getting undressed a 12. It's like Leon all over again. Of course it's not actually a pedo film. It is however a stark and beautiful tale of loneliness and isolation and the loss of childhood innocence. It's not a pedo film. This film will no doubt be of interest to you if you've seen Twilight because obviously now you're all dark and moody and in touch with your emotional side and you'll desperately want to find something else you can latch on to in a feeble attempt to embrace some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy that you are somehow an outsider and no one understands you. However, Twilight is nothing more than a shallow, vacuous and pretentious waste of time. If you think you're all deep and soulful because you like this glorified Evervescence video, you have no soul. If you want to see something dark about the misery of human life, then go down to the video shop and get naked by Mike Lee or come and see and put your money where your mouth is. Idiots! Thankfully, let the right one in is nothing like Twilight. It has a gentle, understated truthfulness and honesty to the complexities of growing up, life and relationships. And how the hell Hollywood expects to do any sort of half decent remake given their previous track record on these things is frankly stupefying. Also I should point out, nothing actually happens in this film. It has the slow, meticulous pace of Scandinavian cinema that I really like. It can easily stand alongside Jar City, Possessed and Insomnia. It is another effective, measured and very human story about death and loss. One of the things Scandinavian films do really well is minimal dialogue, relying instead on telling the story through expressive acting, interesting camera work, editing and sound. Which given that film is a visual medium shouldn't really be that unique a thing. All the characters are interesting and never veer into wacky, weird or pointlessly creepy. This film has some fantastic bits of violence in it. The bit in the swimming pool and the cat attack are just amazing. There is a brilliant subplot I'd love to tell you about, but to tell you about it is to ruin it, so I won't mention it at all. But trust me, it's brilliant. So to conclude, if you want to see mindless killing and death and tits, then this film isn't for you. If you want to watch a beautifully filmed, wonderfully acted, thoughtful and heartfelt non-horror movie, then give this little gem of a movie a chance. And with any luck, you'll be able to say you saw it before it becomes everyone new Donnie Darko, which it will. I've been Richard Sandling, thanks for watching my film review show.